Hello and welcome to today's video. So this week we're going to be having a look at Star Wars paperbacks, uh, movie novelizations, a vintage Han Solo tie-ins um, and some foreign editions that were published for the original trilogy way back when. So that is the subject of today's video. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. So I'll try and do these in a sort of chronological order. Um, and that actually starts um, with this one, which is um, the adaption of THX 1138, which as we all know, um, was Lucas's, one of Lucas's films before he actually did Star Wars. I don't actually know if they did um, a movie adaption for an American graffiti, although that might be one I wouldn't mind trying to track down. But um, this one is a novelization by sci-fi author Ben Bova. Um, so that's what this one is. And obviously Lucas was uh, very well known by this time. So George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars and then THX 1138. So simply on the back of the popularity of Star Wars, then they were, I mean, they couldn't have made it any more obvious. Before Star Wars, before R2-D2, before C-3PO, there was THX 1138, almost as if he was a droid. But um, obviously we know that's not the case. So that's where this one comes from. So it is semi Star Wars related, but not really, you know, um, and this is the UK edition from 1978. Now, on to Star Wars for, for proper now. So um, the original uh, Star Wars adaption was written by George Lucas. And uh, I do not own the first American uh, printing of the hardback. However, I have got this one, which is a Del Rey one. And I believe this was published for the Science Fiction Book Club, uh, which is uh, this one. It does come with this rather nice flyer dated August 1977. Um, things to come, Star Wars. Look at that, really nice. Um, yeah, Members Edition 249. So this is um, for the Sci-Fi Book Club. Very interesting shot of um, uh, Carrie Fisher there, which is a bit more unusual. And quite nice to have this with this particular edition, which has got that beautiful um, uh, cover artwork, which is one of my absolute favourites. Beautiful, beautiful artwork, that. But as I said, this is the book club edition, not the original first edition hardback, which is actually very, very expensive. And I've not got around to getting a copy of myself yet, but still dated 1976. So really nice, uh, really nice hardback, that one. Now, the next one I've got, and these aren't really in any order, except split by movie. So this one here is a French one. Now you'll find um, as we go along, I've got a few foreign editions and I do really like them. I've never gone out of my way to actively pick them up um, because um, you know there's dozens and dozens of languages. Um, however, as they've come my way, I have tried to grab them. And as I've said in previous videos, um, I used to do a lot of training with French dealers uh, sci-fi dealers and record dealers and they would always look out for new Star Wars stuff for me and that's where some of my French stuff has come from um, so this is as far as I believe as far as I know the uh, the French first edition from uh, June 1978 brand new unique artwork um, some of it better than others but very interesting all the same and uh, this was the format, like these little hardbacks without dust wrappers. Completely unique covers there. Sovereign. Illustrations by Vanny Tildy. There you go. So it's a French one. Oh, this is a bit more modern, this one. This is um, this is Empire Magazine, which used to be a film magazine in, in the UK. Uh, I have a funny feeling, this is just a script for A New Hope. I have a funny feeling this was given away as a um, as a cover mount, like a free uh, a free book with the magazine. This one also dated um, 1997. A bit further back in time now. So this is the Spear UK comic book adaption of Star Wars. So... Um, Absolutely fantastic. This I do love my comic book related paperbacks. In fact, I've done a whole video just devoted to all my um, uh, paperback sized comic books. And uh, this one uh, was no different. So this just adapts the um, just reprints rather the uh, the Marvel comic adaption of the movie. Alas, in black and white, which is a bit of a shame, but that's actually pretty rare. That one, I think that's quite scarce from that. 
Um, now another foreign one, Krieg de Stern, so that's German. Um, this one a little bit later, because it mentions the winner of seven Oscars there on the uh, the front. Once again, nice artwork. Is, that, is this the Hildebrand Brothers? I forget now, but it's got that very um, sort of generic C-3PO as a robe, as more like a droid rather than anything else. Um, so I think that's quite early art. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, this one's quite nice. This has actually got some stills in the middle, which is always cool. When you were a kid reading these, it was always nice if you had a few photographs to break things up a bit. That's Peter Diamond there, the Tuscan Raider. Nice uh, pre-filming Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. Very early shot, that one. So when did this paperback get published? can be quite difficult to tell sometimes with foreign editions. Actually, it's, it's late. No, this is actually a 14th printing from 1984, but it was first printed in January 78, so that would be about right. Uh, now we're on to the regular paperbacks. This was the British paperback adaption of Star Wars. Pretty ropey old copy. This is probably my original one. Um, I read these to death uh, when I was young. Um, the Star Wars adaption, as I said, it's, it's hard to believe nowadays. But back then we just didn't have, um, yeah, this is a first. Um, we just didn't have things on demand like we do today. And that's why books and comics and all the related stuff was a way for us to continue the um, adventure. And that's why things like the books and the comics were so important and uh, so popular. And uh, I just love them a lot. Now, as well as that one being the adult one, we actually, um, all the books had a, like a junior edition, which is a little bit more simplified for younger readers. Uh, once again, not in the greatest of condition. Um, <laughs> actually, it's actually covered in, in writing there, but at least it's a copy. Um, certainly one on my upgrade list, but at least I've got one. Uh, so it's the young readers. Next, we've got another French one, um, a French paperback. Now, once again, incredibly interesting artwork on this one. Certainly not what you would expect. This one comes from Purple Haze, the old shop, at one point. Claude Gilbert, I think, that says did the translation. Translated from the American by Claude Gilbert. Original title, Star Wars. There we are. Quite a nice little paperback. Interesting, you've got, I guess that's the Death Star, and you've got Vader's face right in the middle there. Typical quirky uh, stuff. So still more Star Wars to go. So look at this one. I don't actually know what language that is. Strud Tussen Dusteren. Hmm, let's think. I guess it could be something like Swedish or Dutch maybe. Might be a Dutch one. There's some photos inside again. Much wider than the normal ones. Antwerp. That's Belgium, isn't it? Brussels. So maybe that's what it is. Random House. Copyrighted 1977. Nice early edition, that. Very unusual, that one. So that's all my various Star Wars adaptions. Now, just after that came... Um, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, which um, I remember absolutely loving. Let's give that a bit more room. I remember loving Splinter of the Mind's Eye. It was really quite dark. Um, now, this is the Del Rey hardback of it. And this has got, I don't know if you can pick it up. That's signed by Rolf McQuarrie down the, down the bottom there. I wish I'd have known this um, when I got to meet him, because I would have taken this along for him to get signed. Um, but yeah, Alan Dean Foster did this adaption. It is absolutely excellent. It comes highly recommended. Once again, this is a, a book club edition of this hardback. Although I imagine it would have had a regular trade hardback as well. Ballantine Books, yeah, 1978. So this is just a year or two after the original Star Wars. And this is how I remember reading it. It was in this British Spear paperback. And I think this was a huge seller at the time. Um, and as I said, boy, uh, if you never read this, I really would recommend it. It's fantastic. It really is. So um, yeah, come to recommend that one. That's actually a really nice copy of that one. And that's 1978. So that pretty much finishes the first film that we're going to look at. Now we're going on to Empire Strikes Back. So in no particular order again. Here we have another French hardback. Um, 
Lempar Contra Attack. Um, great, great uh, cover there, taken from one of the posters. Um, Donald F. Glut, of course, he was the author. Nice to have these in our back. Yeah, I got a few photos inside as well, which is quite nice. In actual fact, that's a really nice little edition, that isn't it? 1980. Yes, I do love the French stuff. I really do. They did. They did a really good job of it, in my opinion. Then we've got another one here. So what's this? This is Empire Strikes Back. Now, once again, I don't recognise the language, so I'm guessing it could be Dutch, uh, but I don't know for sure. It's not French. Runa. Antwerp again. So yeah, I think this is uh, a Dutch copy. There we are. Then we've got the... Um, regular paperback adaption. I remember reading this as soon as it got, I mean, because the book you could get before the film was released, because back in the day, uh, America would get the film and then the UK would get it about six months later. So it was an, an agonizing way. Uh, but it did mean that the book publishers, the comic book adaptions, all of that, they made hay before the movie was released and boy did they make hay um, and made the most of it. So, uh, but this was the first, um, way I read the, read the, in fact, probably the first way I read it was in comic book form, um, but I did read the full books. So that's a nice, quite a nice copy of that in first edition. Then, um, similar to um, Star Wars, they did a young reader's edition. Um, we've got this very bright red cover, which is so susceptible to fading. This happened before I got it, but this is still the best copy of this one I've had through my hands. And this is just a slightly more simplified version of the same, the same story. Nineteen eighty, and then we've got um, the comic book adaptation. Um, so this is Arrow. This is the British comic book adaptation of the Marvel comic. Um, absolutely fantastic! I loved this as a kid. I just loved it to death. Um, I read it and reread it and read it again. Um, just fantastic. It's a really good adaptation. Miles better than the first film, if you ask me. And then this one, which is actually a really good read. Um, this is quite unusual. Uh, Once Upon a Galaxy, a journal of the making of the uh, Empire Strikes Back. A uh, bit of a duff cover, but it does show that the sort of the camera crew there is uh, Irvin Kirshner directing. Um, quite scarce, this, I think, nowadays. This is the British printing of it. Um, I seem to remember I had a German one at one point, but that doesn't seem to be here now. Um, Absolutely fascinating. I read this, um, I don't know, early 80s. This one was published in 1980, but I read it, I didn't read it upon publication. I got it um, some years afterwards, but I remember it being a particularly uh, good read. So um, if you ever get the chance to, to, to come across one of these, um, it's recommended, it's good stuff. So that's all my Empire Strikes Back related books, paperbacks, for this video anyway. So next we're on to Return of the Jedi. So. What have we got first of all then? So let's start with this, which is the uh, the normal, regular film novelization. Um, this one's written by James Cann, um, adapted from the story by George Lucas. Pub Futura was the UK publisher. Standard now with the color photo spread for Return of the Jedi. Then we've got, um, oh, might as well do this one now, the, the junior adaption of this one. This is the lighter blue copy, exactly the same. This one's been laminated, this particular one. I found the junior edition is by far the harder to come across in Nice Nick um, than the regular ones. Then we've got this one. I think this is the German, I think it's the German version of this. Um, In fact, it might, this one might also be the, a Dutch one. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a Dutch one as well. Then we've got uh, the comic book adaption. So this is the American comic book adaption. 
And I've also got the British one as well. So the only difference really is £1.25 to $2.50. That was back in the day when um, uh, the pound was worth about half of a, a, what the dollar was. So a dollar bought you 50 pence. Nowadays, um, a dollar buys you about 90p. So that's how times have changed. Um, but yeah, fantastic adaption, this. Um, once again, equally as good as the, uh, the Empire Strikes Back one. And I do like the way that they've cut it down into comic book form. It's good stuff. So two editions of that one. So that's it on my um, Jedi ones. Now I've got a couple which, once again, these are French and these are later. So apologies for this. These are the sort of mid nineties published by Pocket, but I've got this, it's like a sealed box set. Um, and this is quite interesting because it's got Star Wars Empire Jedi and Heir to the Empire. All right, so they've got that as, as book number four, which is a little cheeky because it's not. However, at the time, Heir to the Empire was the natural successor to the movies. So that's why this is in here. And for some reason, um, but quite good, I suppose, because we have a closer look, I do have a, another copy of number two. Um, it's a, a, it is the same one that's in the, the box set there, but you get to see what these are like outside of the box. And I wonder if these are dated. Um, well, this one's the original edition, 1980, but I'm sure these are sort of mid 90s, mid 90s, those. Interesting all the same, uh, those French ones. Now I've got one more little pile to show you. So they released three Han Solo books and that's these here. So they were by Brian Daly. Here's the first one, which is Han Solo's Revenge. And I remember reading these as a kid, but I've never gone back and reread them. But apparently they are pretty good. I don't remember the order that they came out, but this one's uh, dated 1980 for Han Solo's Revenge. Then you got Han Solo at Star's End. Once again, a British edition. This one's 79, so I guess that's before Han Solo's Revenge. And then you've got Han Solo and the Lost Legacy. Was that the third one? Yeah, 1981. So that's the order. So Star's End, Revenge, and then Lost Legacy for the three Han Solo books. Um, in America, but never originally published in the UK, was three Lando Calrissian books as well. Um, this is just an odd one that I have picked up. It's a US one, uh, Lando Calrissian and the Flame Wind of Ocean. Um, yeah, I never read this one either, I'm afraid. 1983, um, as I said, there's at least three in that series. Um, if I get a chance, I will pop in the pictures of the other two so you've got the full Full set. This is one that was quite uh, quite common, so it's not too difficult to find. It's the Star Wars Intergalactic Passport. Don't leave your planet without it. Look at that. I have a funny feeling. I got this through the um, through the Star Wars fan club, you know, back in the day. First edition, 1983. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So Star Wars Passport. Another little book here that I didn't get around to showing you the other day was the Star Wars book about flight. Just a little youngster's book, this one. Sort of a mixture of um, Star Wars and factual. In fact, it looks all, all factual. I don't actually see any Star Wars in it. So, okay, you've got a page of Star Wars and then that's it, is it? Yeah, and then a little mention of the Death Star. So that is the weakest Star Wars tie I think I've ever seen. Okay, one page of Star Wars plus the cover. Um, this one's pretty nice, which is a guide to the Star Wars universe. This was pretty much the first ever sort of guide to the Star Wars universe. Uh, certainly published in book form. Oh, if they knew what an empire that would... Um, uh, publishing Empire, that would come. But I remember it being pretty good at the time, this. Um, being quite impressed with the uh, that original Guide to the Star Wars Universe. When was this? 1984. 
1984, a bit of crease there. Now, the last one I've got, and this is a corker, so I've saved the best to last. It's this one, The Force of Star Wars. So this is vintage. Um, let me see when this was published. I think it's late 70s. It's 77. It's printed by the Bible Voice Incorporated. Um, and this was uh, like a Christian um, based version of Star Wars, um, where they sort of tie in the force of Star Wars into religion. Um, it's quite a curiosity, this, and uh, I don't wish to bash anyone's religion, but it is quite unusual that they've even got some official stills there. I don't know how licensed this actually was, in actual fact. I mean, did Lucasfilm sign off on this? I mean, it would certainly appear to be that, wouldn't it, you know? Um, yeah, you've got quotes from the New Testament alongside Star Wars photos and printed by the Bible Voice in 1977. So I've not read it, but there you go. Look, you can see the, uh, the contents there. It is truly a bit of a Star Wars curiosity. Um, and copies are quite expensive. I've seen this as much as $100, this book. Um, I guess there's just not many ar around. Um, yeah, published by Bible Voice there. Um, there can't be many of these that have actually survived. So that's probably why it's a curiosity. It's definitely a bit of a rarity. Who can tell? But there we are. That's a look at my Star Wars paperbacks. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that look at some of these oddball, offbeat and pretty uh, pretty damn cool uh, vintage Star Wars novels. So if you have enjoyed the video, do please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you've not already, do please subscribe to the channel for regular vintage Star Wars content. Thank you very much again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.